Hi, I'm Olivia Race, and this is Dale Remsberg, and we're members of the AMG instructor team. The first, and what tends to be my go-to most of the time, because I have it with me all the time when I'm going up, is just a simple double-length runner, in this case, nylon. I want to keep the sewn part back near my harness, so it's not in my way. I match two ends in my basket hitch, and then tie it off with an overhand knot. This is a good extension for simple, short repels. It is a little on the short side. So if I'm gonna be clipped into the anchor here, I'm gonna be fairly tight up into it. Another option, and one of my primary go-tos, is also a 48 inch runner, or double length runner. And what I like to do is girth hitch it through my tie-in points. I do try and keep the sewn part down here as well. Keep that out of the way, it's just easier to work with. And then overhand about halfway through, a little bit shorter than half can work as well. What you don't want to do is get too long out. And this just creates a shelf or a place to put my repel device once I start repelling. This is my favorite for blocky repels or terrain that's undulated because it gives me a lot of working distance when I need to clip into the anchor. So in this case, you know, even though we're on the ground here, it demonstrates well kind of blocky terrain. And this gives me a lot of distance so I can move out and work around pull ropes and, and be mobile on the terrain. When it does come time to repel, this is where it goes in the shelf here. And this is a great point here. It creates separation from my repel and my backup, which is gonna go onto my belay loop. A common mistake with this technique is to clip the locking carabiner into both, which does create redundancy in the repel but it also creates a problem that when you're in tighter terrain or hanging off your anchor, it can trap the locker in here and that's hard to work with. Uh, so I tend to avoid this technique. It's not necessarily wrong, but your anchor or your tether is already non-redundant when you're clipped into the anchor. And this is where the highest forces could occur if something, if you were to shock load on the anchor. And then when I go to repel, um, I'm on the nice dynamic rope, and so I like to have it just like this. Simple, clean, easy to work with. A third option for our double length extension is to girth hitch it, clip it back to the harness. This allows me to measure my length out, and then I'm gonna tie an overhand on a bite. And this short bite will give, is where I'm gonna clip the rappel. And the part that I had clipped back to my harness is the tether. And this is going to keep me into the anchor a little bit tighter, which is better for steeper terrain. To load the rappel, I'm going to make sure that my I'm at the middle mark in my rope. Take a bite of rope. And then it's always good to consider at least adding a backup to our rappels. And I'm going to do that with a hollow block tied as an auto block. Anytime I use a friction hitch, I want to test it and make sure it's going to hold. And one thing that's great about this particular tether is I can load the rappel and feel that it's holding before unclipping from the anchor. Another extension that I use a lot of the time on routes that have a lot of steep technical descending, uh, example, black velvet wall here in Red Rock, is a dedicated extension like the chain reactor. Uh, I won't use it on the way up. It lives in my backpack or in the back of my harness, but it's a dedicated tool for the descent. It adds a little weight, but sometimes that extra weight's worth it because it gives me a known quantity, easy to adjust lengths, very versatile and strong. Um, I girth hitch it into my tie-in point, similar to the other extensions. This is something that a lot of climbers use on a regular basis, sport climbing, it's what they're taught, and so it makes a lot of people feel comfortable as well. But it's a great tool, and gives me a lot of options for length. Nice and long, gives me a lot of room to move. If I wanted it to be shorter, I could clip up a loop and be tight into the anchor. And then I can choose any number of spots here for my rappel device, I could go tight here. Gives me a nice length, gives a separation from my rappel device and my backup when I use that. Or if I want a little more extension, I could go out here as well. A final example, another designated tether is the Petzl Connect. 
Um, unlike all of the examples we've shown so far, this one we actually girth hitch through the belay loop. Um, I liked that Dale said that he kept his chain reactor in his pack throughout the day because I do think some of these designated tethers, as you're going up, you have the rope to connect in with, which is a great tie-in point and it keeps things less cluttered. But for long descents, designated tether can be a nice thing. I'm going to put a nice round stock attache for my rappel. And then this is going to be my tether. The nice thing about this is I can adjust it tight. I can loosen it out if I want to extend myself out to look. You know, one of the concerns with all these tethers is that they're static material and that creates a little more vulnerability at the anchor. If something were to happen and we shock load the anchor, the forces can get high really quickly. The one thing the Petzl does really well is that this will slip under certain loads and reduce force. And then just the fact that it's made out of climbing rope itself makes it absorb energy better than a lot of the other materials. There are lots of different choices for a rappel extension. And what we choose to use is gonna come down to the material that we have, the terrain that we're working in, but it's good to have a lot of different tools in your bag of tricks that you can work with depending on what you're given. It's all about application. And here, Olivia has chosen to go with a short, uh, a short nylon sling. I chose to go with a longer Dyneema sling. They have their pros and cons. Um, they both have knots in the system that do weaken the material, but knowing how much they weaken them is important. And in this case, we're not worried about it. We wanna try and avoid shock loading, of course, uh, but it's gonna be hard to uh, reach the limits of this material in any practical climbing applications. One thing that we have in common in all of these different tethers is they're all sewn pieces of fabric as opposed to tied together cord. Like Dale said, they're not redundant when we're using them. We are trusting our lives to them. So it's important to have that material be very strong.